from Agudlas Khan Korla. <coughs> and uh, Minister, I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak on the energy crisis. And we might say, in fact, there are three specific aspects or three specific crises facing us as regards energy in this country today. And the first of those clearly is the one that's most pressing for so many households currently, and that's the rising cost of energy, the rising cost of bills, uh, the, uh, the fact that we've seen um, the average household in Ireland seeing, facing, facing significantly increased costs. All 14 of Ireland's energy suppliers have increased prices at least once this year. And in September, the Commission for Regulation of Utilities warned that people will face higher charges due to record demand and reduced supply and we are we know that people have many many people many households and families have real concerns about facing fuel poverty over the coming winter and that's a real and pressing um, concern I think for all of us and I think we need to hear more from government about how that will be tackled secondly there's clearly a crisis or a, a potential crisis building in terms of security of energy supply in terms of certainty of energy supply and my colleague Alan Kelly raised this yesterday with the Taoiseach asking can it be guaranteed that the lights will stay on and noting that Sean Sherlock in response to a uh, got a response to a parliamentary question uh, just in the last few weeks, pointing out that there have been seven amber or systems alerts in the past 12 months, the most recent on 28th of, of October. So we do have a concern, I think all of us, about guaranteed security of energy supply. And that, of course, is very much linked to then the, ri the rise we're seeing in prices and the huge burden that's placing on households. But of course, we also have a third crisis, and it's a global crisis, and that is the crisis that, uh, that is being addressed currently at COP26, and that is how we decarbonise our energy and how we move to reduce our emissions to ensure that we uh, do not see a, a devastating uh, a global temperature rise over the next decade and, or more. And that, I think, is where we, we uh, also need to focus the, uh, the import of, of, of policies. And I, you know, I think all of us in opposition accept these are challenging crises for government to address. There's no doubt about that. It's very difficult to address the challenge of enormous increases in prices for households, the burden that's placing on hard-pressed families and individuals, uh, alongside difficulties with supply, alongside the urgent need to decarbonise. But we do need to see more from government, more firm commitment, more concrete, more concrete commitments on how to address these three crises. Uh, we know currently that half of our electricity is powered by gas, and the demand for that has increased as most countries have exited lockdown, and that's led to the shortages in supply. So increased urgent investment in other forms of energy generation, in renewables in particular, but also in microgeneration, in, and increased in, uh, and urgent investment in retrofitting, all of these will help us to tackle the crisis in cost and the crisis in supply because we know that really there's no and I know we've we've discussed this before there's no shortage in potential energy sources around wind and solar uh, and particularly in wind in Ireland but what we haven't done to date is put in place the infrastructure the investment to develop the infrastructure for offshore uh, wind generation and that's uh, that's something that we need to do urgently in order to meet the ambitious targets that we've set over the course of this decade until 2030 uh, and I heard the interview this morning with the chief executive of Airgrid with, or with Airgrid with Mark Foley, where he spoke about the challenges that are, are, are that, um, that are, the, the challenges that are there in meeting the targets. Uh, clearly a very ambitious blueprint that Airgrid have launched today, shaping our electricity future, but real questions about how that, that blueprint can be delivered upon, particularly with last week's news of Equinor's withdrawal from Ireland uh, and, with, uh, and with slowdowns in so many areas, not least in transport, uh, um, with the renouncement yesterday of the Greater Dublin Area transport plan, public transport plan being delayed. Uh, so we need to see more firm commitments on green hydrogen, on the rollout of new technologies, and last week I asked uh, you, Minister, to outline how the government intends to make the production of green hydrogen more cost effective. And I think that's again something we need to hear uh, greater clarity on. We need to hear an update on when on when the new planning regulations will be submitted uh, on solar generation to ensure we all of us are getting uh, uh, correspondence from schools, from community centres, from sports clubs, GA clubs and football clubs in our local constituencies about how they can contribute 
to meeting targets by investing in, in solar. There's huge goodwill out there uh, in the community, but so far they've been stymied. They've been obstructed in, uh, in, in uh, putting on solar panels and in feeding back into the grid. And so that micro-generation piece is hugely important in meeting uh, shortfalls in energy supply. We also need to see greater clarity from government on data centres. We know how, uh, how much of a burden they place on energy supply and we need to hear more about how that's going to be addressed in future. And I know we've had that debate here. Uh, and we need to hear uh, more firm commitments from government on, on just transition, on how there's going to be uh, allowances made for those on whom uh, the me necessary measures to tackle climate uh, will have the most impact. We need to ensure that households who are struggling to pay rising fuel and energy bills are supported in doing so. And my party believe in the need to, uh, to, uh, to, to sustain a carbon tax. We think that's one of a suite of measures that is required to help us meet this cl global climate emergency. But we also believe that government needs to do more to address the cost that, that imposes on households, to ensure that we see uh, al better allowances in the fuel allowance payment, that we have a new carbon tax credit. And we put forward in our Labour alternative budget a proposal for an alternative carbon tax credit worth €200 Euro a week for a household with incomes below €50,000 and a low energy rating, a BER of less than B2. And that sort of initiative would have been a real signal uh, that, uh, that, uh, that government understands that transition to a low carbon, to a decarbonised economy, uh, will have an impact on people and that that impact must be addressed. So there are ways to address this. And there are ways, to, there are ways that go a, a government that is a green government, but also that is a government that recognises real burdens on households that are struggling. There are, there are ways that governments can address these crises, both cri the crisis in energy uh, costs and in energy supply, while at the same time moving forward to decarbonise in all of our interests and in the interests of our global society. And as COP26 enters its final days, I think all of us very much uh, hope and, uh, and anticipate that we will see a clear pathway given at international level uh, through, the, through the memorandum that's being prepared. But we need also to have clarity of the pathway here in this country. Uh, we need to see how that climate action plan that was launched last week will actually deliver in practice on the ground and how the, how the impacts that it's likely to have on individuals who are struggling with fuel costs will be addressed through other measures from government and ensuring a just transition. Gurra